Okay, so I have seven questions here, and uh, you can answer them any way you'd like. Uh, so, first question. What was your situation before arriving at Unity Village? Um, I was living couch to couch and looking at being homeless. And basically was homeless, but like right before I came, I had a place, but it wasn't going to last. I knew I was just going to be right back where I was. And I just wasn't in a very good place in my life and needed to move on. And in order to move on, I needed to find peace within me. And that's what Unity Village did for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good. I'm glad. Uh, number two, do you feel safe at Unity Village? Yes, I do. Well, that's good. I leave my door unlocked. Yeah. All the time. My door's never been locked because I trust who is there. Yeah, and we're yeah. a family and we watch out for each other and we take care of each other. Yes, we do. Um, do you feel that the staff of Homes Now has been responsive to your needs as a resident? Very much so. I don't need for anything. If I need something and I ask, somehow it comes upon oh yeah um do you think unity village has helped you yes tremendously it has really changed my life and it's changed my outlook on the world and what's going on um do you feel that the village maintains stable operations without a homes now board member on site 24-7? A hundred percent. We've been in COVID for almost five months and we've just, we haven't had any problems. We've had few little problems and the problems that we have had mostly have been minor and they're taken care of right away. To be honest, for who most of us are in the mental illness and the problems that we have in the life that we've had to live and struggle, I think we've all done quite well being quarantined to all <laughs> together and having to deal with staying in and not being able to go out and live normal life like we're used to. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's kind of a weird time for everyone, I think. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, it's so, the best thing. Yeah, so... Um, how many how many police calls have been made to Unity Village since it opened in August? Zero. Zero. Okay. We have never had one police call. Or even any major incident that would no, no yeah. nine one one, no nothing like that. Um is there anything else you'd like to say to the general public? Just that I think they really need to open their eyes and see that it's going to make even more problems if they shut us down. It's going to make more problems in our life. We're already struggling to try to get our life straight and move on and make a normal, what you society sees as a normal life. And you know, it's only knocking us like 50 feet backwards instead of forwards. Yeah, and and I, I totally agree with you that this is ridiculous. Uh, so it's. I mean, personally, me, if we lose Unity Village, I'm going to be living in my car, probably down by Glass Beach. So I'll just be another one sitting there on the street. Right. And, you know, Long I think. 18 other people. Right. And, and that's the thing that I think that the city doesn't realize is. Like, you know, I think that, it, it, I mean, this is like playing games with people's lives. Like, everything's fine. Nobody's been hurt. There's no public safety issue that they've mentioned. Just, ah, we got you. No, no board member on site 24-7. We got you. We'll shut you down. I mean, really, that's kind of, I don't know. I think it's messed up. But. Yeah, it really is. Especially when, I mean, it would make more sense that you, you know, 
that you just come in, kind of check bases, you know, do what you got to do and everything and then go. Because, I mean, how is, I guess, why why would they want somebody to be there outside of? Well, I, I, think, I, mean, I understand on a basic, on a normal basis, like before COVID, yes, I understood that. But what is the issue is what I want to know. That's what I want to well, ask it, the it, it, public is what is the issue? We've proven what are, is it that they're upset because we've proven that we can live a normal life inside of a camp without being babysat? Right. Right. I mean, that's what it is. It's like, we have to be babysat? Well, if we all acted out and we all acted, you know, like we needed to be babysat, I could understand that. Yeah, But I we're think... all adults and we all are able to take care of ourselves. The 18 that are there are able to generally take care of themselves. Right. And th I think it's because there's like the implication that like, I guess the uh, the most, uh, a, a person who's homeless, who's like the most severe case is treated as the norm. And the, and so the, the and, and again, like, 24-7 means 24-7, so that means that even before COVID, like if I was the one staying for that night, you know, I was, I was technically not allowed to even go to the grocery store, even though I did go to the grocery store, uh, it, it, you're, you're, we were technically not allowed to do that. 24-7 means 24-7, and so uh, I find this policy unreasonable in general, uh, and uh, but I do, I don't agree with Wild Wild West. I, I think that, yeah, we do have designated staff members, but, you know, that would be Tina and Dave at this time uh, and uh, as, like, the resident managers, so to speak. And uh, it's, it's been working fine. Uh, there, it's been going on for multiple months, and it's better than Well, ever. if you, in my personal opinion, okay, if you look at everything ever since even Safe Haven, in the last five or six months, it's actually ran a lot smoother than it did before. Not saying that it was bad before or anything, right. but just we were happier. We made our rules. You know, we pretty much stuck to our rules, you know, I mean, in a basis anyway. I mean, yeah, we bend a few here or there, you know, because rules are meant to be bent sometimes. I mean, right. everybody has a different circumstance. So right. you can't make a solid rule for everybody because some There's people... There's always an exception. Yeah. Right. You know, like, so they're going to be bent a little bit. But, I mean, it's not like we violated some huge, you know, it's not like we had some big incident there that caused the police or caused, you know, any kind of, like, safety issue, you could say. There was no safety issue. Right, right. And, and yeah, I felt, I feel like this is kind of a game of gotcha. Like, oh, we gotcha. Uh, and, and it's like, okay, well, we didn't, nothing well, bad happened. because Marcus got them. Right, yeah, Marcus caught the city with their pants down, and so they're like, oh, we're going to catch you with your pants down, too. How, how do you like it? That's how I see it, but, but there's nothing bad here. I mean, with the, with the sweeps or the cleanups, they're actually taking people and, and moving them along and, and getting rid of their stuff and stuff. When you know, just... who else are they going to hire to do everything we do for them people out on the streets so that they don't have to get other people? Right. I yeah. I, and just, and all it, the outreach, you know, the food that we give two to three times a week, me and Sherry. Yeah, I mean, it's I I, I mean, I just think it's insane. I I, I don't know, uh, but uh, not only affecting us, they're going to affect everybody on the streets too. Right, and they're going to affect, and they're going to not that they care, but I'm just saying. Right, and they also affect even people that aren't homeless because. They, because it's like you're just gonna see a lot more people on the street. Like it's like it's like one plus one is two here. So. Well, right. Um, well, anyway, Julie, thanks a lot. Uh, much appreciated, and uh, this will be in the video.